Welcome. Let's take a look at an application of indefinite integrals. In this case, we're looking at a ball that is thrown vertically upward from a height of 5 feet with an initial velocity of 60 feet per second. The ball is subject to gravity, or a downward acceleration of 32 feet per second per second, and what we want to do is find out how high will this ball go? So to kind of acquaint ourselves with the problem, what we have is somehow a ball is being thrown upward from a height of five feet. It's going to go up and then down. And we want to know basically how high this ball goes under these circumstances. Now what do we know in this problem? First of all, we know that we have the ball starting from a height of 5 feet. So we know that the initial position of the ball when it's thrown is 5 feet. What else do we know? We know that the ball is thrown with an initial velocity of 60 feet per second. So we know that the velocity at time zero is 60 feet per second. Uh, we also know that the ball is subject to gravity or a downward acceleration of 32 feet per second per second. So we know that there is this downward acceleration that is 32 feet per second per second. This mean, and it's downward, so this would be negative. So with this information, we should be able to get started. Now, what do we know about acceleration? We know that acceleration is the derivative with respect to time of velocity. So what that tells us is that velocity should be the antiderivative of acceleration. And if that's the case, then in this particular instant, the velocity is the antiderivative of negative 32 dt, which is the same as negative 32 times 1 dt, which would be negative 32 times t, t being the antiderivative of 1 dt, plus our constant of integration. Now, what do we know about velocity? We know that velocity at time zero is supposed to be 60 feet per second. So what that tells me here is that in this case, for this velocity function, that negative 32 times zero plus C should equal 60. Negative 32 times 0 is 0, so C should equal 60, which means then that our velocity function for this instance or this occasion is negative 32t plus 60. So there's our velocity uh, function. Now, um, what do we know about velocity? Well, we know that velocity, v of t, is the derivative of position. So that should mean that position is the antiderivative of velocity, dt. And in this particular case, position should be the antiderivative of negative 32t 
plus 60 dt. So if we integrate this, uh, we get s of t is equal to negative 32 times the antiderivative of t dt plus 60 times the antiderivative of 1 dt. So s of t is equal to negative 32. The antiderivative of t is t squared over 2 plus 60 times the antiderivative of 1 is t and then we do have our constant of integration c. So s of t, simplifying here a little bit, is negative 16 t squared. Um, 2 will divide into 32 16 times plus 60 t plus c. And now we know that the ball was thrown from an, a height of 5 feet, so we know that initially the position is 5 feet. So using that information in our position function here, when t equals 0, we get negative 16 times 0 squared plus 60 times 0 plus c, and that's supposed to equal 5. Well, 16 times 0 squared is 0. 60 times 0 is 0, so we have 0 plus 0 plus c is equal to 5. So this tells us that c should equal 5. And overall then, this tells us that our position function should be negative 16 t squared plus 60t plus 5. So recall that our task here was to figure out how high the ball will go. So if we look at this drawing, what we want to know is this height, how high will the ball go after it's thrown? So what we're looking for is the maximum position or the maximum height of the ball. So describing this in calculus terms, what we're interested in is finding the maximum height or position of the ball. So we have our position function, and how do we find the maximum of that function? Well, we find the critical points of its derivative. And what is the derivative of our position function? Well, the derivative of our position function is the velocity function. And we do have that. So what we want to do is find the critical points of the derivative of position. That also happens to be the velocity function. And the critical points come from two places, where that derivative equals 0 and where that derivative is undefined. Now notice that our velocity function, our derivative, is a nice linear function. So we won't be finding any critical points where the derivative is undefined because it's defined for all real numbers. So we're left looking for critical points uh, by setting the derivative equal to 0. So we get negative 32t plus 60 equals 0. If we add 32t to both sides of the equation, we get 60 equals 32t. And then if we divide both sides of this equation by 32, we get that t is equal to uh, 60 over 32. Now 4 goes into both 60 and 32. 4 goes into 60 15 times, and 4 goes into 32 8 times. So our t is 15 over 8, and that can actually be written as a terminating decimal. 
That is 1.875 seconds. So that's the time at which the derivative of our position function equals zero. And we anticipate that being a maximum, but we don't yet know that because we have not tested the critical point via either the first derivative test or the second derivative test. I'm going to use the second derivative test because it's easy to use and I actually have the second derivative already available. The first derivative of position was velocity. The second derivative of position is acceleration. And our acceleration function we saw was negative 32. So A, my acceleration at 1.875, is negative 32 because the acceleration function was constant. That's a negative value. And when acceleration, when the second derivative is negative, we know that there is a relative maximum at that critical point. So we have a relative max at t equals 1.875 seconds. Are we done? No. We now know when it uh, achieved its maximum height. We know when that happened, but we don't yet know how high. Now to find how high, I just need to evaluate my position function at this time that produces a maximum. So what I want to do is I need to take my s of t and evaluate it at 1.875. And that's going to be negative 16 times 1.875 squared uh, plus 60, 60 times 1.875 plus 5. And now, if I go ahead and run that through my calculator, I will find that this is equal to 61.25 feet. So what we can say is, so summarizing what we've found is that when the ball is thrown upward from a height of five feet, and with an initial velocity of 60 feet per second, it will achieve a maximum height of 61.25 feet. I hope you find this helpful.